Twitter's billionaire owner, Elon Musk, is now publicly feuding with Apple. Although the feud seems to only be going one way, he is very public about the ways in which he disagrees with Apple and is butthurt by them. But Apple, even though they're not necessarily saying anything publicly, they are privately making moves that could indeed hurt Twitter's bottom line. More importantly for Elon Musk, his bottom line. So where did this all stem? It started with Elon Musk calling out Apple because he was butthurt that they decided to postpone advertisements on Twitter. He tweets, Apple has mostly stopped advertising on Twitter. Do they hate free speech in America? And then he adds, what's going on here, Tim Cook? Now I've got to say, I'm not necessarily the most business-minded person, but publicly tweeting at brands and asking them why they suspended their advertising is, <laughs> isn't necessarily going to be uh, accomplishing what you want to accomplish, which I, I guess the goal here is to bring them back. Maybe it's just to publicly shame them into caving. I just, I, I feel like maybe if you are a billionaire and you're a business genius, you would see that this isn't necessarily going to help. But because he was angry that they dared to postpone advertisements on Twitter, and we'll get to why brands are doing that in a moment, he then decided to go on a tweet storm where he called out Apple for a plethora of other reasons. And I don't actually disagree with some of the things that he calls them out for here. He responded to library.com asking who else has Apple censored after they wrote, during COVID, Apple demanded our apps filter some search terms from being returned. If we did not filter the terms, our apps would not be allowed in the store. Apple may make good products, but they have been opposed to free speech for some time. Now, he also highlighted the time when Fortnite compared Apple's monopolistic practices to George Orwell's 1984. He then published a poll asking if Apple should publish all censorship actions it has taken that affect its customers. And he added, Apple has also threatened to withhold Twitter from its app store, but won't tell us why. And adds, did you know Apple puts a secret 30% tax on everything you buy through their app store? And finally, he tweeted out this meme indicating that he'd rather go to war with Apple than pay their 30% fee. So what started as Elon Musk condemning Apple for not advertising on Twitter has led to him calling them out for a plethora of other reasons. And now he's basically saying, I don't want to pay the 30% uh, fee that you're charging. So this is him essentially saying, OK, well, if you want to suspend advertisements, maybe I don't want to pay that 30% fee. Now, as I alluded to earlier, Apple is privately making some moves. We'll get to that. But let me just for a moment explain why this is good. I like to see the world's richest man go to war with a trillion dollar company. I think that this is good for me because this could potentially harm both companies, both of their bottom lines. And I think that that is a good thing. So the more that Elon Musk instigates these wars with other brands by publicly condemning them, it may be an unintended good thing that has come of Elon Musk buying Twitter. I both like that brands are suspending advertising on Twitter and also like that he's calling them out for suspending advertisements on Twitter. Whatever gets these giant monopolistic companies to beef with each other is A-OK -okay with me. Now, let me just for a moment explain why a lot of brands aren't advertising on Twitter. It's because of Elon Musk. He interacts almost exclusively with far-right accounts on Twitter, and he also posts pictures promoting irresponsible gun ownership and probably worse, caffeine-free Diet Coke, which in my opinion makes him a psychopath. But in addition to that, he's also made a lot of anti-Semitic and Nazi dog whistles. Yes, you heard that right, Nazi dog whistles. As Eric Schmelzer writes, Elon Musk has tweeted 88, the white supremacist code for Heil Hitler, to which they replied 14, code for their 14 words, trotted out the Jewish puppet master trope, and then posted a wink to anti-Semites with a cartoon similar to the one they use in reference to Vinman. Now, as you can see, these are the tweets in question, and basically Nazis thought that that was a dog whistle to them. That was a wink and a nod to them. Now, that doesn't definitively prove that Elon Musk is a Nazi. He does have plausible deniability. But when you take into consideration the fact that he exclusively interacts with far-right accounts and has vocalized very conservative views, it's not necessarily out of the question to think that maybe he's sympathetic to these far-right individuals and there's enough there there to where brands just don't want that stink associated with them. Hence why they're choosing to pause advertisements on Twitter 
in droves. Now, the thing about Apple is that they're concerned with the platform due to the proliferation of hate since Elon Musk took over. As CNBC explains, representatives for unnamed app stores, which include Apple's App Store as well as Google's Play for Android devices, reached out to Twitter earlier this month after Musk took over, and the site saw a wave of hate speech, according to a New York Times op-ed by Yul Roth, Twitter's former head of trust and safety. Phil Schiller, Apple's former chief marketer who oversees App Review, apparently deleted his Twitter account earlier this month after Musk took over. Philip Shoemaker, the former head of Apple's App Review and current CEO of Identity.com, said Schiller's move to delete his account reminded him of a company making moves to prepare for war. He believes that Apple's App Review department is keeping a close eye on Twitter's content moderation under Musk to see if more questionable content, such as porn, slips through. Apple's recent moves are like when you remove troops from a country before you attack, Shoemaker said. You're thinking you're going to have to pull these apps from the store. Now, pornographic material, to my understanding, was always allowed on Twitter. So it is a little bit bizarre that Apple is seemingly all of a sudden saying, hey, Elon Musk, why are you why are you allowing porn on the website? I get the hate because that is a new phenomenon. I mean, it's not new to Twitter. Twitter has always been a hateful, steaming pile of shit. But the increase of hate after Elon Musk took over is what these brands are most worried about. Uh, but the porn thing doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. But either way, Apple has already a lot of ammunition in order to get rid of Elon Musk just because of the surge of hate and given previous history. As CNBC continues, Apple requires apps with user-generated content such as Twitter to have strong content moderation systems in place. Insufficient content moderation was the reason why Apple booted Parler, a smaller Twitter competitor in 2020, Musk has reportedly vastly downsized Twitter's content moderation workforce. So when you combine the surge of hate speech on Twitter following Elon Musk's takeover, along with the uh, content moderation team essentially being Thanos snapped by Elon Musk, you can see how Apple already has a lot of ammunition against Twitter. And if they did it to Parler, odds are they would do it to Twitter as well, and if he's going to, in addition to that, pull an Epic Games and say, I'm not going to pay the 30% fee, well, then that's another reason that they might boot Twitter from the store. Now, I don't necessarily know how this is all going to play out either way. I, for one, support Elon Musk going after Apple because these are both terrible companies run by terrible people and if they somehow bring each other down and tank each other's stocks in the process of this public spat i think that is good for the country i'm gonna come do not come 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 welcome to the come zone 